how slow I was going. As long as I wrote as hard as I could and I made those 10 laps that day, it was a success. So you want to set up goals where you can't fail. Like, uh, say you want to get in shape. Uh, goal one, you have to go a mile. It doesn't matter if you have to walk during part of it. You have to go a mile. It doesn't matter if it takes you an hour. You have to make it a mile. A goal like that, you can't fail out, so it's really good. So you got to keep consistent goals like that. Really small baby step goals where you can't fail. And then other goals you want along the way is you want benchmark goals to see if your results are paying off. Okay, well, first part, like I'm talking about buying in. Uh, when you set a goal, you want to fully buy into it. What that means is you want to do the research and make sure your plan is pretty legit. But you got to believe in yourself 100% that what you decided to do is going to pay off. So everything that you've planned out is going to pay off in the end. And if you don't believe this 100%, it's most likely not going to happen. So for me, when I finally got this plan, I just knew, like, if I put in all this work, it's going to pay off. And most plans, too, this is why you have to buy in, actually. Progression isn't a steady thing. So every time you do it, you're not like, oh, better, 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 because that'd be so easy to buy in. You have to believe that when you progress, it's going to be up, down, up, down, uh, maybe down for a while, but eventually it's going to keep going. I'll give you another example through motocross. There's a point where I'd like I'd been getting better for a while. I hit one point for two weeks. I wasn't getting any better. I actually felt like I was getting worse, but I like I stuck with my plan. I was like, I feel like I'm getting worse. That's why I just stayed on it. And then one day everything just clicked. Everything I'd been working on finally just like paid off and had like made sense that it was working the way I wanted it to. So you really have to fully bind your plan and believe 100% it's gonna work, and consistently stick on it. Another. Another thing, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but like most successful plans are really slow and steady. Uh, I'd say a good example is weight loss. The ones that are like, oh, you're going to lose 5 pounds in a week. Chances are the 5 pounds you're losing isn't like healthy weight loss. Because most healthy ways you lose weight, it's like a pound or two a week of fat. And that's healthy weight loss. Otherwise, you could lose like a lot of water or stuff like that where it's not too healthy, but you lose 5 pounds right away. So most good plans are actually slow, steady increases. Versus fast, um, say fast volatile ones that are going to be like varying up and down. So kind of slow and steady is generally a better route. Another example I can give for that is uh, I used to do rock climbing quite a bit. And uh, the basic way the, the walls work is uh, you got 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to like 12 or something. Obviously 0 is the easiest and you just work your way up. So when I'd start climbing I could do generally 0s and 1s right away. And then... Every time I'd go, I'd get like a couple more twos, a couple more twos, a couple more twos, and then I finally got all the twos. And then the next time it was, I got a couple threes, a couple threes, and I just kept going until I got to the point where I was getting a couple fours. One day I was feeling really good, and I just climbed probably twice, three times as long as I had ever climbed. And uh, that day I killed it. I got like three new four outs or something. I was like, oh, dang, it's a good day. But the problem was I totally overdid it. So that for the next two, three weeks, whenever I climbed, I actually degraded a lot. I was back to working on, like, twos. I couldn't do, like, all the threes I could do. I couldn't do all the fours I could do. So it caused me to degress for a while because I overdid it on that one day. So sometimes it's better to underdo it a little bit and steadily increase than it is to totally overdo it and have those, like, steps back where you have to completely wait. So I lost, like, virtually three weeks because I overdid it that one day. Another super important thing, it's probably this actually might be the most important, is uh, when you set up your training program, do what's called hell or high water. Okay, I'm going to go back to that last thing I was talking about where I said it's probably the most important thing to success. And that's what I call hell or high water. So what basically it means is whenever you have your plan in motion, you're going to do everything on that plan come hell or high water. So that means you can't make any excuses for yourself. Turns out your body is like, the mo your mind especially, is like the most amazing thing on earth at coming up with excuses. If you don't want to go work out today, like, oh, my arm's sore, uh, my hair's slightly messed up. Um, I, don't, I don't think I drink enough water today. I can't, I can't work out. Your, your mind will come up with seriously any excuse you could possibly imagine. So what you have to do is no matter what excuses you have that day, you have to cancel them out. Like for me, I told you... Uh, Two things I had to do uh, during the week was cardio. So one day I ha was a running day for me. It was cardio, and I hadn't done it all day. I don't know why. I don't know what excuses I made up or whatever. But it came to uh, the point it was midnight, and I still hadn't run, and I was trying to go to bed, and I was just like, nope, I still got to make this happen. So midnight to 1 in the morning, I drive down to the local high school, and I go and I run for three miles or whatever I needed to do that day. 
just because hell or high water is gonna make it happen no excuses that's all i said like especially on my motocross story the part where i failed was when i got away from that when i when my bikes blew up i was just like oh main excuse it's like ah don't want the money or whatever where it should have been like you know what no matter what it takes i'm gonna get these fixed i'm gonna get back on track if that was the case i'd probably be like pro right now just like that other kid that i saw at supercross doing the same thing he's doing but it made an excuse, and that's why I fell behind. Okay, we're going back to, like, high school now. Uh, let's talk about my success and the things I learned. But uh, towards the end of high school, actually, even with motocross, I noticed at one point I started to get down a little bit. And I kind of didn't know why. And then I started, I started figuring it out slowly. I think because in high school, uh, what happens is the basically all the media you've watched all your entire life starts like taking over in your head a little bit. Because like there's these messages are constantly going in your head, and whether you realize it or not, they they start affecting you. Basically, uh, what media shows you your entire life is that uh, external things are going to make you happy. So if you have like a lot of money, you're going to be happy. They they have like the always the story of the guy that's like poor on the streets and he's like scraping by in life not too happy then he makes it rich and he's like super happy and his life's amazing getting like an amazing car is gonna make you happy having the big house is gonna make you happy having uh the hot girlfriend wife like finding love is gonna make you happy which it can don't get me wrong on that one it can but uh that's, that's still questionable so basically uh during this stage of my life i started to like chase that external happiness uh i got to the point where i never had any money at all throughout my entire life and uh like, the most I ever had was, like, 100, 200 bucks. So I got to one point where I had, like, $3,000 saved up, and I was just like, okay, I'm not any happier than when I had no money saved up. And then I was like, could I, could I buy anything with this $3,000 that uh, would make me any happier? And I thought of actually a couple things, but essentially the answer was no. And I was thinking about it. I was like, if I had $5,000 saved up, would I be any happier than I am right now? And again, essentially the answer was no. I was like, what about $10,000? And I realized, like, pretty much no matter how much money I had saved up, it wouldn't actually make me happier. I mean, maybe short term I could buy some, like, cool kick-ass car and go drive for it and short term be happy. But essentially there was very few things I could buy. And I'll tell you the things I thought of that if I did buy actually might make me happier. Here's some of them. Running shoes. A trampoline. A bicycle. And a video camera. Most of you are like, I have no idea what all those things have in common. The things are, those are uh, activities and things that can put you in your flow state. I love uh, video editing and uh, taking videos and making videos and stuff. So for me, that's something that could put me in my flow state, which could essentially make me happier. Um, running. So running something puts you in your flow state, helps make you happy. Uh, trampoline, same thing. I love learning flips, pushing myself. So that would put me in my flow state. So those are essentially things that could make you a little happier if you could buy. But essentially, most part, the things you buy with money will make you happier. Like, having a nice car, having a big house. I know people that uh, they live in gigantic houses. They have like $4 million houses, have some badass cars and stuff. And I would argue that, I, I, from what I've seen, they're not any happier than anyone else I know that's like kind of barely scraping by. So basically, too, another thing I started chasing when I was going for this external happiness was uh, girls. Because you're always seeing like... I mean, even love stories get to guys, like, don't get me wrong, they're like, yeah, even to this day, I still kind of want to find, like, the one, you know what I mean? Where everything just clicks with, everything's good, you have that love in your life. So, at this point, I was just like, oh, if I had girls in my life, I'd probably be happier. And I started, actually, at this point, dating, like, a lot of cute girls, like, cuter girls than I'd ever dated before, and, uh, I realized at the end of the day, like, I wasn't any happier. If anything, I was more down than I was before I started having any girls in my life. And I thought that was kind of weird. Um, like, I, I definitely enjoyed my time with them, but, like... It's like a shallow happiness. Like, while you're with them, you're happy. Then as soon as you leave, you're. I was more down than I was before I had their girls. And I think the reason for that is I was trying to use the girls as my escape. When true happiness comes from within, you can't, like, put that on somebody else. So basically, during this point in my life, I was searching for that external happiness. And then, uh, I would say the real equalizer was when I got to college. And this is something you've heard your entire life that you probably never took to heart. And that is that uh, knowledge is power. And for me, I always thought that I was like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Because, like, growing up, I kind of, I kind of, like, disliked school. Most of the subjects didn't click for me. And then, actually, a teacher, great teacher in college, one of the first classes I took, he told me this. He's like, almost every class that you hate in college, probably every class you hate, 
It's because you think you're not going to get anything out of. You think the information that you're learning is pointless. And I was like, he's totally right. Uh, the classes I disliked, I would memorize all stuff right before the test, and I forget it right after. I'm just like, it's pointless information. I'm never going to use this in my life. Those are the classes I didn't like. And then same thing with reading. I always thought growing up that I hated reading. And uh, it turned out I didn't hate reading. I hated what I was reading. I started reading books later that uh, I had interest in and I thought would help me and benefit me in life. And it turned out like I loved reading them. So it was just the context that I was reading. So I'd say the great equalizer too, uh, as far as knowledge is power, is uh, anywhere you go in life, there's only two things you're going to have with you. You're going to have your knowledge and your skills. Your clothes might be different, your family might not be there, your friends might not be there, but those are the two things you'll always have with you. So having knowledge and skills is extremely important. A few things I learned in, in college too is uh, you can learn something from everyone in every situation. Even classes now, okay, next time you have a teacher that you like hate, instead of sitting there thinking about how much you hate that class, how much you hate that teacher, think about if you, like what you wish that teacher would change about themselves. Like maybe they don't handle kids the right way. Maybe the way they speak isn't like, but like essentially make it a positive. Take out the learning from it. And then this is something huge too. When you have that teacher that you dislike and you find the things you dislike about them, go back to that same teacher and find five things you really like about them. You never want to be a negative person in life. I hate, I hate hanging around people that are like, they always find the negative and they just bitch about everything. So even if you like don't like that person, find five things you've either learned from them or five things you like about them and focus on those positives. When you start focusing on the positive things in life, you'll find your life just gets way better and everything, because like I know people that uh, they see the same situation, they, they're, they're, they're like, literally right there and one person will think it's an amazing thing and it'll make their day and like, oh, that was awesome and I'll find someone that'll be able to bitch about that same thing and it's just like, it's amazing how when you start seeing the positives in life, how you can change that. Kind of on the same note, but same like same with yeah. Always look for the positives in every situation too. If you have something bad happen to you, say your girlfriend breaks up with you, look for the positive in that because there's guaranteed there's positives in every situation. So find a way to find those. Um, these are some of like the I guess the keys when I started in college and I started I guess learning that knowledge could be power and I could use this as my benefit. I had a great interest in happiness and what made people like truly happy. And these are the things, some of the things I figured out and that have helped make me happier, I guess, knowing these and uh, be consistently happy. The first thing I'm going to mention is working out, eating healthy, and plenty of sleep. I would say sleep is probably the number one thing I've noticed uh, from day to day that, like, either keeps me happy or can, like, I'm going to say put me in a bad mood, but, like, or I'm just not enjoying life as much as if I get, like, lack of sleep and I don't sleep well. So sleep, if you can consistently get like your eight hours or whatever you need of sleep every single night, I would find a way to do that. Uh, some tips is uh, you can like black out your room. Generally, the darker it is, if you don't know what like time it is from the light, you can sleep better. Sometimes if it's too loud around you, you can use like a fan or something. Um, nutrition, I think is extremely important. I'll give you my big basic gist of the diet I try to follow. I try to make sure I get my vegetables for the day. I try to make sure I get my fruits and I try to make sure I get my protein. Other than that, the only thing I try is I try to eat an all-natural diet. So that means all the foods that I eat don't have any chemicals in it. Again, your body is like the most amazing machine known to man that man will never create anything as cool as your body. And what your body does is when you take in these like toxic chemicals that they're, they're putting in these foods, your body pretty much detoxes all of them. But the problem is your brain and your body doesn't function 100% with these chemicals in it. Whereas if you had just like straight high nutrition foods, it would function better. And your body's using energy to detoxify all these things and then constantly repair itself from the damage these chemicals are doing to itself. So your body's doing all this extra work because you're putting these chemicals into your body. Whereas if you weren't, you'd be better off than if you are. Like I know I, know I have a buddy who uh, runs marathons, he's in amazing shape and he's super unhealthy. But just like, even he, if he ate healthy and had that clean diet, he would be in better shape and, and better off than he is right now. And uh, I'd say the last part of that was working out. When you work out, it's got a lot of benefits. Uh, a body in motion tends to stay in motion. I have a, my grandmother, she's almost 80 now. And uh, she wakes up every morning at like 3, goes for a swim. She's always out throughout the day doing stuff. And she's like, she looks phenomenal for her age. It's so like, she has a hunger about life. You can just tell, like, everything's going good. My dad, on the other token, he's only like 45. 
And uh, he's been sitting there, like, the last three years doing almost nothing with his life. And, like, he's kind of, like, a bum to talk to. Doesn't have that same eagerness for life. So definitely you want to be consistently out, like, living your life.